Good morning, everyone. How are we today? I'm so happy today. Oh, me? Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. Wow, how hot it is, huh? Nice, yeah. beautiful. Well, thanks for coming today, guys. It's, it's going to be a great morning. Um, did you want to say anything before we start? <laughs> I don't know now. I'm following your lead. <laughs> There's the blind following the blind. Okay, guys, we are going to have a great morning today. Yep. So um, we're going to hand it over to the worship team so we yes. can start worshiping God. Amen? Amen.
Great morning to be in church. The air conditioning's working in here, so we're in a good space. Brave the car party. So let's raise a hallelujah. Nice hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I'll raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I'll raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I'll raise a hallelujah. to fight for me. Jesus said, 
Father, we are so in awe of you today, Father God. And as we sing and praise you, Father God, we just, we feel we are not worthy, Lord, but you are worthy of all our praise and all the honor, Father God. We thank you for today, Lord. We thank you that your hand is never too short for us. We thank you that you are always guiding us. We thank you for your love and your grace, your son, Jesus Christ, giving up his life for us, Father God. So as we worship and praise you, Father God, you deserve all the praise, all the honor, and all the blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Wow. Uh, well, good morning, guys. I wasn't supposed to cry, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, great to see you guys here today. So we're going to have a great morning. Um, so today we're going to, we're actually going to have time. So if we can find my Thai friend who's about to do Thai today, B. Woo! Every time went I quiet. We need to give Joel. you a cheer, I think, don't we? I know. Let's hear it for B. Come on, there we go. <laughs> so I've got my tissues ready, but I only have two hands, so you just have to watch my tears roll, okay? Okay. So um, okay, I'm going to read off my phone again. But, um, hi church, this offering message is a follow-up from my last message. Last message was not only for, um, ev- my last message was not only for everyone, but really for myself. <laughs> funny thing was, <laughs> funny thing was, last offering message was written a few months ago. <laughs> I was supposed to speak that day, but I didn't. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. <Kyle. laughs> Just careful of those eyelashes, mate. <laughs> God knew I needed. God knew I needed it when I was speaking last time. I was going through a tough trial <laughs> during that week. My hairdresser broke her arm and he's now out of action for three months. <laughs> How was I going to find a hairdresser ASAP? <laughs> I was so stressed. <laughs> I know God is always our provider, <laughs> but I couldn't pull myself out of the deep dark hole I fell into. <laughs> the scripture that came to mind is, I can't, okay. <laughs> Philippians, sorry, <laughs> Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and... Oh no, I can't read that one. <laughs> sorry. Sufficient. Okay, I'll read my version, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. And this is what I did. God made way for Viv, my best friend, to quit Chanel and work full-time as a qualified hairdresser at the salon. Now our salon is flourishing, so thank you, God. Just remember who our God is. Our mighty God who always looks looks after us in everything from finding a car spot and finding a hairdresser we needed. God is always our provider in everything. That is why I love to give back to God as He looks out for me. And He'll look out for you guys too. So I really encourage everyone to give back to God and experience what God has done for me. So let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for everything. And thank you for always being the provider and the way maker. Father God, continue to bless everyone here and show them what you've done for me. So in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. <laughs> Thanks, B. Thank you, Carl, for wiping my tears. Do you want to wipe my tears? <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Oh, you need it? <laughs> so, if you're visiting today, B and I are actually the crybabies of the church. 
<laughs> so don't be surprised. I think you didn't come here to see people cry, but unfortunately, that's, that's how real we are here in C3. But we're going to continue to worship um, the kids, if there are any kids except that big giant Matthew. So we're going to continue worshiping. Amen? Yeah. Stand our feet. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus your name is your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Mm, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety Till every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Cause your name, your name is power Your name is healing in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus shout Jesus from the mountain Jesus from the street Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Shout it out Shout Jesus from the mountain Jesus from the street Jesus in the darkness Over every enemy Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus, I shout it out, sing out again, shout the name of Jesus. Shout Jesus for the mountain, Jesus in the stream, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. Break every stronghold, shine through this 
Whatever struggles that they face, Lord, that they can count on you to come through, Father God. Because you are our God. You are our strength. You are everything to us. So we thank you again, Lord. We praise your mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. What a great team we have. Fortunately, we still have our guitarist. Still, <laughs> all the way from England and our basses and our group. You know, how good is our worship team? You know, just clap for our worship team. There's such a great worship team. Just bringing God into the house. So thanks, guys. Okay. Wow. How hot is it today? Yesterday, we were smart enough to have a barbecue. At 5 o'clock when it was 40 degrees, we decided, let's have a barbecue. <laughs> Why not? That's what islanders do. Doesn't matter how hard it is. Okay, well, um, so um, we'll continue on with our kingdom series, The Kingdom is Like. Now, um, for you who haven't seen me preach, I know I have some people standing by with tissues, just in case. Because I have a problem with one of my eyes. I don't know what it is, it just, I don't know. I'm working on it. <laughs> anyway, last week, um, Joel preached an awesome message. And he always brings these from. <laughs> yeah, come on, amen. You know, you know when Joel preaches, I, I actually sit and listen and, and take notes. So um, he, he always brings props, right? So my preaching is on the ten virgins. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is a PG church, so I brought something different. <laughs> this is my prop. Now, we were so busy yesterday with the things that we had to do that I actually was supposed to get a, a lamp. So let's just dig into God's Word before I start talking about myself. So in Matthew... 25, Matthew. What a good name that is. That's why we named Matthew, Matthew. Okay, here we go. The parable of ten virgins. 25. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like. The kingdom of heaven is like. Ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with lamps. The bridegroom was a long time coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry, out, the cry rang out, 
here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for the both of us. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Now to get a bit of context of why Jesus was saying that, you really have to go back to Matthew 24 where the disciples come up to Jesus and they ask him about the second coming. So when Jesus is talking to them, he actually starts talking about the second coming, what to look out for, but he doesn't know when it's happening. So when I was reading through it, this is pretty kind of like an intense scripture, but I found out that it's talking about being prepared talking about us being prepared and you know we have been prepared ever since ever since COVID because if you think about it when we transitioned to church to to change our passes and you know three weeks later Joel managed to shut the church (laughs) it's so (laughs) it's skill that takes a lot of skill but you know regardless of what happened as a church we were actually prepared and I was thinking to myself, so what is something that I can talk about that actually encapsulates us being prepared? And I was thinking about kids. So kids, don't get angry at me. So I did a little bit of digging. And it says, the cost of bringing up a child from a typical middle-income family sits at $406,000. From one year old to 18. That's a lot of money. And I have four kids. And I'm still feeding the one that costs more than the three put together. (laughs) So you kind of actually had to try to work that one out. The one that I have now costs more than the three that I had before. (laughs) And if you haven't seen him, Matthew is 6'5". He is 14, wears size 15 feet. Is his feet are bigger than his age. And it's so hard, I have to go online and try to... Now, it may seem that I'm going off topic here, but just bear with me. I will, I will come back to what I'm trying to say. Anyway, if you look at my kids, I guarantee you would not know which one is the naughtiest out of all four. And it's funny enough, it's actually Conrad. Conrad is the naughtiest kid growing up. Now, I can understand my, my little nephew, Titus. He's the naughty that you can see. Conrad is the naughty that you don't see. <laughs> so this is Conrad. Conrad's walking up, and he stands next to something. And Anna said, Conrad, don't touch that. And he goes like this. While looking at Anna, he goes like this. Then my voice comes out. If that drops down, you're going to get it. Then he stands like this. As soon as I turn my back, he drops it and then he walks away. (laughs) That's how naughty he is. And he did so many things. And and funny enough, he's a teacher now. So I can't figure that out. You're so naughty. Now you're trying to teach kids how not to be naughty. But that's the thing with us parents. You know, this number is just a number. But we will spend any amount of money on our kids. And that's us preparing our kids for life. And we will be disappointed. You know, my kids now are still praying the day that they all come back to church again. I I love it when I see Joel and his daughter up here. Before it was me and my kids. I would just sit down there and just watch them and think, wow, thank you, God. And now you tell them to come to church, they're deaf. You can't hear hear what you're saying. But regardless of what that is, as a parent, we must prepare our kids for the life ahead. And it's just like these, um, the ten virgins. This is what I believe. 
the five virgins that weren't prepared, they actually, it, it depends on how you treat God's kingdom. How do you treat God? Is he worth that much to you that you will go the extra mile to prepare, to make sure if something happens, you're ready? Or are you one of those Christians that say, no, it's all right, but other people pray. We'll let them pray. And you'll just hand over the mantle to them when it is actually our job to, you know, to be in God's word, to, to pray and, and just to work so we are prepared for things ahead. You know, some people say, oh, you're a Christian. It's so easy. Being a Christian is one of the hardest things. People find out you're a Christian. They start mocking you. They start saying, oh, you're Jesus. Is this in there? So what do you do? You just love them. What did Jesus say? Love them. Pray for them. Bless them. How can you bless someone that really annoys you? But that's exactly what Jesus is saying to us. So there are two things that I believe that really works when we prepare. And the first thing, excuse me, is to have a prayer habit to, to every morning. And, it, you know, some people think, oh, if I pray, I have to sit down and really gauge into God. Sometimes it's not that. Sometimes it's as simple as getting up, thank you, Jesus, for today, and just going about your business. This year has been a very strange year for me because I don't really pray that much. But I haven't stopped praying every single morning between 1 and 3 in the morning. I never, that's the time that I love sleeping. <laughs> that's the best time, 1 to 3. But then I was gauging with someone and they said, you know, that's, sometimes that's one of the times that the devil is at his best is working at people while they're actually asleep. So I thought, wow. So this is what I do. I, I, and it might not work for you, but this is what I do. Every morning, as soon as the Holy Spirit wakes me up, as much as I talk, because when you wake up at that time, you just don't want to do anything. So I get into the book. I just read the scriptures I get in the morning and then play a bit of music. And some people say, the Bible's so boring. Well, to me, it's not. It used to be. But with the technology, you can actually listen to the Bible. And if you listen to some of these readings, there's actually one where they dramatize it. They have like this background music and it, it really engages you in the word and it actually makes you enjoy it. Well, for me anyway. So that's what I do every day at work. There's a scripture or maybe a story I want to listen to. Then I just turn it on and, and I listen to it. So the other thing that I believe as we prepare ourselves is feeding your spirit with the word. Some people say, oh, these are the 10 books that you should read before you die or whatever. But the Bible is actually the book that you should read. And this is the reason why this one of the preachers said, imagine you go to heaven and Elijah comes up to you. Elijah, Lord of the Rings, no. Elijah from the Bible. <laughs> so would you know who Elijah is? When he talks to you, would you know... Because he'll talk to you and say, oh, I don't know who you are. So I believe that we need to gauge in the Bible. We need to understand what we're talking about. Um, I am running out of things very fast. <laughs> so, so those are the two things that I believe that has helped me. So just talking about the beginning of the year before the church went into the shutdown. We were all prepared. But throughout the time that, that we actually went online, Joel created this series of, of um, preachings. So the first one was made on a mountain. And that was preparing us for the mountains that we face. Whatever we face, he was equipping us on how to face things that, that, that will either put us down or, or you know, that things that we struggle with every day. And then we came to a series of stand. Stand against the devil and, and, and what he's trying to, to, to do against you. To put on that armor. And now we're in the kingdom is like. So all these series that Joel has put through is very, how should I say it? Encouraging. You know, 
because at the end of the day, it's, this is what we need to do to the to, to people that are listening. We need to encourage them. We need to prepare them. You know, God wants us prepared. You know, there's no such thing as being over-prepared, but it's always good to be prepared because you could be sitting here thinking, oh, such a great day. You walk out that door, someone swears at you, and there's an island, huh? <laughs> That's a no-no. <laughs> you go straight to work. And this is another thing that just came to me this morning. Some of the worst fights you have with your spouse is coming to church. It's either coming to church or leaving church. There's this one instance that, and the sad thing, I hate talking about these things, but, you know, these are the things that, that I've been healed from. So after church, Anna and I and the kids, and it's, my kids are with me. Anna and I and the kids, we drive up to Campsie, and, the, and there's a roundabout at Campsie, and this guy, I don't know whether he swore at me or gave me the finger. I stopped my car in the middle of the roundabout got out and every single car was stopping buses people were standing and I was walking up and she was screaming don't touch him you touch him you go to jail I said I don't care <laughs> as soon as I got close to the guy the spirit said look how foolish you are look how foolish of what you're doing this guy just said something and it has ticked you off and this is me not being prepared because usually when I come to church my favorite seat is at the back so before the pastor can say anything, I'm out the door, sitting in the car. And I hurry up, man. I want to go. I want to go to sleep. I watch my TV. But these are the things that God actually puts you through to prepare you for what is ahead. I never wanted to do this. I hate doing it. I shouldn't say hate. I am uncomfortable being up here. And you can tell. Sometimes I remember the last sermon I did was like, like five minutes and I walked off. I forgot to tell people what to do. I just walked off. That's how nervous, and I'm nervous right now. I just wish that everybody wasn't. I like it in the morning. You know when worship, no one's here? I wish I could preach then. When they, by the time they come, it's finished. You know, it's done. But God prepares us. And I've always said to God, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. If it's up here, I'll do it. Because at the end of the day, it's all about him. It's never been about me. So I hope this message has helped you. Can we get one of the guys up here, please? Like I said, I really preach really fast. Run out of words really quickly. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's about being prepared. Prepare yourself. I tell you, if the Bible is so boring to you, find ways that it makes it interesting. I used to love reading the Hardy Boys. You know, when I read the, the, the Hardy Boys, I can't stop because I want to find out what's going on. Read the book of David, his life. You will be so amazed on what God put him through. A king, and yet he still had to go under another king. How bad is that? I mean, you've been sent, you're the leader, but you have to go under another leader until that leader goes. And you can't do anything to that leader. And that's one of the scriptures of David I love the most. How can I touch the anointing of God? How can I do anything? Tissues. Tissues. Almost, so, almost made it. It reminds me of Kathy Green. Yeah. Pathetic. This is pathetic. <laughs> but, you know, guys... It is what it is. I've, I've, I've fought with, I wrestled with the Holy Spirit. I said, God, why do you make me cry? Why? Why can't I just say something without crying? And this is what he said to me. It's part of who you are. I prepared you for this. So whatever emotions or, or things that come out, that is who you are. So yeah, guys, be prepared. The kingdom of heaven is like a person that prepares himself, regardless of what's ahead of him. So we're going <laughs> to, that's it guys. So we're going to worship again. You know, for those of you guys that um, are visiting, good to see some visitors, some of our visitors coming back. Praise God. I've just got to pray before we start. Father God, I just thank you Lord for your love and your grace. 
I pray that you continue to prepare us, continue to equip us, open our hearts and our minds, and stir our spirits up so that we can come out and preach your word. Not in a way that offends people, but a way that is loving. Sometimes we just need to show you, Father. Instead of talking about you, we show who you are. So, Father God, work in us. Help us, Father God, understand people. Help us love people. In Jesus' mighty name. I may be missing something, Pastor Joe, but I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to some cold drip coffee. I don't know. That's just my thing on a hot day. I don't know what you're after, but hot chips. Why don't we stand to our feet, Pastor Carl? Thank you so much. Be prepared. I love it. That's so good. Here we go. And I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough. And you put me back together In every desire Now glorified Here in your love Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you me free it's the God of the mountain it's the God of the valley there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again oh there's nothing
better than you oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you oh oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing nothing is morning we've had two crybabies up here and an awesome worship team. <laughs> B, how was it? Hello. Oh yeah. No, um, yeah, it was good. Yeah? Yeah. Like how Me I cry? You are crybabies. You know the only thing that I don't like about this? Because it goes on the internet and that stuff stays on there forever, man. That's it's not good. But God is good. Yes, he is. Hey? He's good. <laughs> so guys, have a great week. Hope that we can, you know, have a chat before you shoot off. But have a blessed week and may God go before you. Amen. We're all done. Well, you well. You turn morning to dancing.